afternoon. So I'm Evangeline Manalang, but you can call me Bang for short. So maybe some of us are wondering, what does a scientist or a chemist for that matter have to do with craft making? So um, I was thinking since the last 72 hours, I think, um, what's the relationship, what's the commonality between a science, technology engineer, and a craft maker or people in the arts? So actually, both of these fields find inspiration in nature. And then the second thing is, um, of course, you cannot create something without being inspired by culture, arts, and tradition. So both the creative arts and both the science and technology field uh, find uh, inspiration in the culture and tradition, specifically more so in textiles. And uh, the last thing is craft is making something, making a product uh, that is of use. Same with science and technology, particularly the applied science, wherein we develop something, we make something that is novel, that is useful. So that's the commonality. Now, it's actually um, uh, evident in the agenda of the Philippine government, particularly uh, there's one agenda there from the zero plus 10 um, socioeconomic agenda, wherein uh, there is a need to promote science, technology, and the creative arts to enhance innovation and creative capacity towards self-sustaining and inclusive development. So really, the re there is really a reason or rationale behind um, the fusion of science, technology, innovation with the creative arts. So I'd like to introduce to you uh, the institution where I belong to. So the Philippine Textile Research Institute, it's um, a government agency which aims to be the center of excellence in textile, science, and technology, all in support to making the textile and allied sector to be globally competitive and sustainable. So we are in uh, Taguig in Metro Manila, and this is basically what we do. As a research and development institute, we develop new materials, uh, products that can be used by uh, designers, artisans, craftspeople, in, uh, industry to be able to create higher value um, products. So these are two of the photos of our major programs in PTRI, the natural textiles and the natural dyes, which you will be experiencing or having um, an experience handling later on. And then we also do technology transfer. So whatever we develop, it has to reach to our target audience. So we do technology transfer through training. So we provide training um, on weaving, dyeing, other te textile technology, and processes related to that. And we also commercialize this technology through licensing. Lastly, we offer technical services, particularly on um, testing, quality testing of raw materials, products, or intermediary. And of course, we also do technical services or processing services, rather. So our approach is, of course, we provide s and based solutions to the problems or the needs of the industry. And we are inclined towards environment-friendly, uh, sustainable technologies, green technologies that are cost-effective. Cost, not necessarily monetary, but the value of things that involves nature, or the environment. And we also harness local expertise and indigenous materials. That's why there's a commonality between the science, technology, and the creative arts or craft. And as I have mentioned earlier, we are inspired by um, conservation, revival, upgrading of the traditional crafts. So this is just um, a run through of the textile manufacturing process. So as I have mentioned, PTRI is more of the natural uh, more of exploring natural materials. So our sources are agricultural products or byproducts. So um, we get fiber from that. We develop technology to make this fiber um, ready for spinning. So when you, uh, after this are prepared, it can be span to form the yarns. Then the yarns can be woven or kneaded to form fabric. And these ones can be made, cut, made, and trimmed to create apparel or other textile products. Along the way, you can apply dyeing or finishing. And then, of course, it will reach to us, the consumers. Uh, on the side there, on the rightmost side, you will find there um, samples of the fibers, the processed ones, until the yarns, and also the fabric. 
So you will get to know these um, materials that we are developing. So as I have mentioned, we are more for natural textiles. We specialize in producing innovative yarn, yarns, developing innovative yarns such as pineapple, abaca, banana, cotton in blend, sorry, banana and bamboo in blends of cotton. Now, as I have said earlier, we are developing this, we are producing this to be able to um, make use of this for higher value products. Because uh, if we are going to compete with the other uh, countries' resources, like uh, their cotton or their uh, polyester, we cannot really compare. So we have to find our niche, and that is who we are. We have many pineapple, abaca, banana sources in the country. And as I have been repeating, uh, we are making use of eco-friendly technology. So this is just um, a picture of the cotton pineapple uh, yarn and fabric, and you can also ha see it there. And on the rightmost side of the screen, you will see there the product. So the top is made of cotton pineapple, same as the bottom uh, on the mannequin. So another thing that is our flagship program is the natural dyes. So natural dyes are um, colorants coming from plants, uh, minerals, insects. But since the Philippines has a mega diverse of plants, so we explore different plant sources to get colors from it. So. We are from the, most of us are from the Philippines, so we know uh, some of this, like the Mayana, Talisay, uh, Mahogany, and Indigo. And then we, maybe you are wondering, natural dyeing is already traditional to the country. So what, where did PT, PTRI came in? Actually, we came in to uh, provide system in producing or producing and using natural dyes. So. Uh, by using this methodology, or what we call as process, it's more efficient, uh, it can be repeatable, the colors can be repeatable, and more so, the quality of the product is at par with the industry standards. And then, of course, uh, what we will be doing is just natural uh, extraction or water extraction. So, you may be thinking that uh, these extracts are really prone to microbial um, attack or uh, infestation. So we develop um, a technology to convert the extracts into powder form so that it's trans it is more transportable, uh, the shelf life is prolonged, and at the same time, of course, since the plant materials are sometimes seasonal, at least if you have these powders, uh, you can get them off the rack if you want to use them. And then we also develop technology on, uh, or the formulation of printing paste, silk screen printing paste using natural dyes. And lastly, paints. And the latest one that we have developed is digital printing inks. So um, the six petal flower there is actually the trademark or the logo of natural dyes, Philippine natural dyes. And its color actually represents the different uh, colors that you can achieve using Philippine natural dyes. And those things written there are our promise. So cultural preservation, environment conservation, countryside development, women empowerment and so on so these are just some of the photos of the natural dye stuff and uh, products so on the rightmost side so dyed fabrics were used uh, in in a fashion show uh, abroad and i think in the u.s so i think one of that scrap fabric there is what i'm wearing it's actually made of pineapple and silk so it's naturally dyed and then at the bottom, uh, this is more for the, uh, what you call this, casual wear. So it's also naturally dyed. The fabrics are also naturally dyed. And it's, this is by um, an enterprise which we are partnered with. And then on the left side are actually the uh, materials that you will be handling on later. So I just would like to show you the map of the natural dye production hub, hub and facilities. So. Of course, the material are plants. So there's a question of sustainability. Where do we get them? So through a project, actually two projects, we have established different natural dye production and um, production hub and dyeing facilities. And I am happy to inform you that most of this, uh, um, uh, almost all of these communities are here. So I want you to meet with them later on so that you can ask and uh, you know get to know them. The reason why they're also here is to network with you. 
So incidentally, or not, not so, so they're actually, the reason why they're also the dying facilities is because they are weaving communities in the first place. So they're the natural users of the natural dyes. So these are some of the Philippine textiles, hand-woven textiles, so that you can see in the country. This is not really comprehensive. We have a lot. And uh, we asked them to bring in some textile materials, hand loom woven. They're on the side if you want to see see those materials later. So basically, PTRI is for inclusive social economic growth. So we want our innovations to have effect socially, economically, and of course, culturally. So that's what PTRI is, among other things. So I'd like to go now to the main part of the workshop, which is the surface design. So surface design, it's actually infusing designs onto fabrics, either by putting colors or by painting, silk screen printing, tie dyeing. So we can put surface design by using colorants, or we can also use techniques like tying or using the so the first one, the first technique is what we call a shibori. So basically you're tying or you're covering some part of the fabric so that when you dip it in the dye bath, it can create design. So it prevents the dyeing of those covered parts. Gradient dyeing, it's what we normally term as ombre. So uh, from light to darker color or darker color to light colors, that's also one design. And then we also can do overlap gradient dyeing. So you can uh, color one part and then recolor it to create more palette or different palettes and create gradients. And then uh, the last one is pour dyeing from its name. You just have to pour in the colorant onto the material. And then we can also put patterns on the fabric through different techniques. This batik is more common in other Asian countries like in India, Indonesia. Not more so, in, not so much in the Philippines. So basically, you're putting waxes on uh, the parts of the fabric so that when you dip it in the dyeing solution, it will not be colored. Or on the rightmost part, they dye it with one color, they put wax, and then dye it another again, again in another color. So that's batik. And then block printing. Not also common in the Philippines, but I guess we have, not just so common. So it's making use of wood, wherein the wood has um, patterns in it, and then you dip it with a paint or a paste, and then apply it onto the fabric. And the last one, which we will be uh, experiencing later on, is silk screen printing. So before, they make use of silk as the mesh. So uh, it is the mesh that puts on the, the colorant or the paste in it and then some areas that were covered with uh, stencil will not be colored. So those are the two examples of silk screen printed fabrics. On the rightmost side is a photo of um, an indigenous people in the Philippines. So it's actually making use of indigo. So the Philippine indigo is a plant which is a stable source of blue color. And on this side, um, actually multiple colors, making use of talisay. The yellow part is actually colored by talisay leaves. I don't know if the talisay leaves is there or outside. <laughs> and then um, the, the orange one is making use of anato or achuete, more commonly known in the Philippines as achuete. And then the violet one is making use of sapan. So it's just playing around with the design. Yeah. So um, these are also these are further more examples of materials that are making use of natural dyes and applying surface design. So if you're wondering who Miss Jean D is, actually we have invite, invited her to uh, teach you on the techniques of doing the tie dyeing or shibori dyeing and silk screen. So she has been working with PTRI for several projects. She's a textile and fashion designer. So these are her works. So if you will see here the uh, the brown base fabric, it's actually colored using coffee pulp, which is the first waste material in coffee bean processing. And then the black 
print is made using talisay as the color. So talisay is very flexible. It can be black, it can be yellow, it can be gray. And then, um, of course, the blue one, if you were listening earlier, where do we get the blue one? There. So there. So um, it's applied, the, the shib this is shibori dyeing. So uh, shibori was done on the fabric and then the fabric was converted to a coat. So, and then, of course, there are some of the printed samples. So without further ado, going into the, the exciting, more exciting part, of this workshop, I'd like to call on Miss Jean. Good afternoon. Um, I'm very grateful to be here. Where I'm salamat sa pagdalo. And gusto ko lang uh, bigyan kayo ng saludo lahat ng natural dyers. Taas yung kamay. Okay, raise your hand. So, maraming maraming salamat sa pagpatuloy ng tradisyon ng pag, uh, pagtitina gamit ang mga natural na, 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 na halaman. Okay, so mga halaman para sa... So, thank you very much for everyone for coming. Um, so just so you know, I'm Jean, uh, as mentioned by Ms. Bang, and I'm a proud uh, scholar, actually, of uh, Philippine Textile Research Institute. Just to give you context, how I came here as a, uh, a textile designer and a fashion designer. I actually finished uh, my degree as a fashion designer, and I wanted to learn, or I wanted to use natural materials. So the first question was, where can I get uh, Philippine textiles and uh, apparently that question led me to um, many many more questions and many more and more problems until I finally got to use um, Philippine textiles and especially natural textiles. So I'm not going to, I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna tell you more stories later on as we, as we do the work, okay? But just to introduce to you some of the processes. So we're we're going to do what you call, what is familiarly known as shibori. So shibori is of course from Japan, and we're not, we're not really, uh, I'm not really going to teach you how the Japanese does it because they're extremely accurate. I'm gonna teach you the the Philippine method, okay? Which I would refer to as tali tali or tai tai, okay? Or ipit ipit, or you try to uh, sandwich pieces together because I know one of the important Philippine values that I learned from many many communities I've worked with is that the ability to improvise and I know that not of not all of these uh, materials are available to you but I'm going to give you suggestions as where you can get it and also make use of uh, maybe plastic waste or wrapper, wrappers on how you can integrate it to your work so first things first when what I learned about using natural materials, weaves and natural dyes, is that you have to be extremely humble. Okay? You don't set expectations because you get extremely frustrated. And I know that from experience. So when I joined Ternacon, I was really going for a specific color of blue. Okay, and I used indigo dye, I tested it, it was wonderful, it was perfect. And then when I did the whole five yards, what happened? So it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but it turned out to something instead. So that is a very humbling experience. Trying to control nature is impossible, okay? So you'd have to not set an expectation, rather be open to possibilities. Let nature teach you what where you can go, okay? So that's that's what I'm gonna teach you today. So how do we embrace the idea of using natural effects? What will your explore, uh, exploration give you? What can it teach you? And how can how can you use it creatively to apparel, maybe to shawls or to other products you want to do? So here's a wooden, st uh, wooden type. You can also use the plastic ones, it's acceptable. You can Put multiple ones, it's really up to you. Be open to the possibility of creating new forms by trying it yourself. I'm not gonna give you um, I'm not gonna give you a formula of any specific pattern because I want to discover what you can do creatively, okay, using these tools. Now, you see here there's also popsicle sticks. Now, if you have any excess wood, okay, material, it could be barbecue sticks, banana cue sticks, okay. May, just make sure you have two of those, okay? And you can use a rubber band or excess thread to tie 
and make sure to secure. So you make e pit, e pit, like that. Okay? And then this will create a resist. So you can use any flat bamboo if you have. Okay? Even the round one if you have, just not so big because it's going to be extremely hard to try. And then create some placement. So later we will find out what this looks like. And then what else? Um, oh, of course we take also inspiration to the Binudbud bud technique of the Higa Onon. Okay? So what we do is, you, they actually make uh, smaller ties using abaka. Um, of course here, you, this is like your school project before. Okay, but what I did, I did, it, I did not make it balanced. I did not make it symmetrical because you would feel like you're always doing resort wear with that. And you know, maybe you're sick of resort wear and you want to try something else. So you can come up with bigger tyings and then com uh, combine it with smaller ones. Okay, or create different sizes. So you, you create what you call a graduation. Okay, just like your ombre, there's a darker part and a lighter part. Here, you create graduation by creating different scales or different sizes, okay, to create a, a point of interest. And what kinds of designs would you like to do? So this screen printing method is, of course, most of you know, you use this to create t-shirts, okay? Usually you have like a square image here, and then you try to produce the screen for that square image, and then put it on the shirt. Okay, now I learned also that you can use this on flat textiles, and it's actually quite beautiful. But let me start with this one because this is very, very simple. So the design here are actually corals, okay? And these are all Philippine corals. So why did I choose this design? Because, because I'm also a teacher, and I learned that visual students, extremely creative ones, are more engaged when they have pictures. Okay, and this is also my way of note-taking. So when I went to Bohol with my son, who is very excited to snorkel, okay, we saw lots and lots of corals. And then, of course, what led us there is um, I actually interviewed the marine biologist, learned more about corals, and it got me more fascinated because I don't like swimming. Actually, I don't like going outdoors because I'm very introverted and like working indoors. But then my son, who is a nine-year-old, just likes to play around, okay? And if he wants to swim, I'd have to go with him, right? So I have to find something that I was genuinely interested about. So that's the story how I met the corals. And then of course, what are corals? They look like pretty plants under the sea, but they're actually animals. So there were a lot of things that I learned about the beauty of the Philippines, which you cannot see from outside, because you have to go deep. So it's the same thing. What kinds of designs would you like to put in your work? This should be designs, or this should be stories you would like people to know. Okay, because that designers are known to be like that. So they pursue something of their interest, and they integrate it, they put it into their work. Don't think about so much what would people respond to, because... You might be living in your place for the longest time, but you see, I haven't been, been there. I haven't been there. The other people haven't been there. And there are many things that you can tell through the textiles, okay? So how are we going to do this? Of course, the, we, we partnered with uh, Hocus Manila to do us the screens. So these drawings are actually not mine, but my friends, uh, Dr. Vincent Tan, who also illustrates, apart from doing interior designing, also teach. Okay, so these are our passions, and I'd like, I, I love to work with people who are equally passionate, who I can learn from, especially the scientists. I love the scientists, because they're extremely organized. Everything that I'm not, they are. Okay, so that's why it's very important to talk to people. Anyway, so the way to do this is simply put it on, on top of a fabric, which you will uh, see later, and then our friends from PTRI will be helping you apply the natural dye paste, and then you would press, slide, and lift, okay? Can you remember that? Press, Press slide, slide, and lift. And there's going to be a dance step like that. So that we get to exercise also, okay? So this is probably the easiest one. If you want more controlled designs, and if you want to maximize the very little natural dice you could use, you could go for screen printing. However, if you want to experiment and take risks, I suggest you go for the Tali Tali method or the Shibori Dying Filipino style, okay? 
some, some things that you have to remember. First thing is your choice of material. The type of material you can only use or we would recommend you using is actually natural materials. So how would you know? Firstly, if you're weaving, you would know what yarns you're using. Okay? So you, some people ask from the city, is this really natural? You know you dye it. And then you would see if it actually reacts. And so you would know if a uh, material is given to you and it doesn't, uh, it does not absorb the natural dye. And obviously it's not natural. So what we have here is cotton pineapple, uh, uh, machine woven, 70% uh, cotton and 30% pineapple leaves. Pineapple leaves that come from waste of the pineapple uh, fruit we actually eat. Not the pineapple that we used to make a rock. Okay, so this material is actually thicker. So the thing with dyeing is that our resist dyeing, which is the shibori dyeing or the tie dyeing, is that whatever you expose to the dye gets darker, and the one inside does not receive the dye, which makes it lighter, or there are no uh, dyes that actually attach to the fine fabric. So when it's thick, it's very important that you place the fabric you would like to receive more color outside. And the one you would like to resist the color would be inside, whichever technique you're doing, which I'm going to show you later when you go to this section. Now, we also have materials like silk. And this is probably my favorite because it's very gratifying. But it's also very difficult to weave. Okay, that's why it's uh, sometimes more expensive. Okay, so silk... As you, you can see, it's more translucent or more transparent. And because it is more transparent, it absorbs more dyes quickly, okay? And at the same time, even if you fold it sometimes, if, uh, you can, uh, the color is almost equal from the inside and the outside for as long as it's not too thick, okay? So... We have here, so, so you know now the material, so basically you check if it's thick or thin or translucent so that you would know how much dye stuff you're going to be collecting because as you know, master dyers, I, I don't need to tell you, weight, okay, weight of the fabric should be equal to the weight of the natural dye stuff that you need, except for indigo, of course, okay, so... How are we going to prepare that material? Ideally, it's flat, okay? Right now, it's really crumbled, but we have to accept the true state of this fabric for today, and we're gonna make use of that as part of our dye. So, second thing you should know is how are you going to fold, okay? So, we borrowed this, again, from our Japanese friends, okay? These are the typical types of folds you can create, so I will just give it local names. I will call this for my pie. Okay, so you create a cordon pleat. So if you sew, you would know how to do this pleat as well. Okay, but basically here you would notice that since it's an accordion pleat, you make sure that there's entry of dyes on both sides. So if you try to fold it, okay, like this way, you would be resisting the ones that's inner, okay? Unlike when you do the accordion pleats, you're gonna be accepting more dyes, okay? So that's why they pleat it this way. There's also the panuela style, okay? Where if, wherein you have the square one, okay? You have the square fabric and then you fold it diagonally in half. And maybe if you want to resist the inner part, you create another fold. So if it's this thick, it's going to resist. This, this part is going to be lighter, and this part is going to be darker. Now, you can combine those two. So you can do the diagonal, I'm sorry, the the, pan, uh, the pamay pai, the accordion pleats first. So this is how it looked like. And then you can do the tiny panuelo. And now you have what you call the super lolo, okay? <laughs> or the triangle, okay? And then the rectangle. Is, is that is that... Memorable to you? The super lolo. Okay? So why are we doing the folds? So that we can create repeats. Okay? We can create repeats. We can create patterns. Okay? Because dyeing is supposed to be easy. Especially natural dyeing. is very easy so that you can dye happy. Not thinking about so much 
of the negative impact, okay, that you give to nature because you're dying naturally, all right? So, what are the ways to create a resist, okay? How do you prevent the dye from slipping through the fabric? So, the first and easy way is that if you have excess yarns from your looms, okay, you could use it to tag. So you don't need to buy extra more yards because I know when you weave, there's that excess yardage, okay? Which you can either integrate in your next weaves or you could use for tie dyeing. So as you can see here, it's already blue because I used it before. So I keep most of the yards that I use. And then what you see here uh, is a result of one of the Manilenius hobby of ordering online. So this is actually packaging from online delivery. I know this is bad, I should stop. But then the excess, <laughs> but I realized that this plastic, okay, is actually quite nice and it's easier if you want to create chunks of lines, okay? It's actually easier to manipulate and I actually keep it afterwards. So I cut a packaging, a plastic packaging into strips and use it to tie. And I'll show you the result of that. This is a result of that. I used here um, the strips of plastic to create a resist for this particular work. So it works, guys. So I tried it already. So I want you to try for yourself later. So you can also find um, clips, of course, if you're doing your sinampai. Okay? And some of your clips could be used as a way to resist. So after you create folds, you could just clip it.